Welcome back to the channel. It's your Saturday Night Delight, where we talk about all the best comic books that were released this week. We've got a big debut from DC Comics. We actually have more Marvel to talk about than anything else. Doesn't normally happen in this. And obviously with me, as always, is Drew from Comics Lead. How you doing, Drew? Doing great, Wes. It's been a busy week, but I always make time to talk about some great comics. So let's talk about some great comics this week. Well, let's talk about the big debut from DC Comics this week. I thought Green Arrow number one from Joshua Williamson and Sean Isaacs was actually a pretty fun comic book. It turns out Ollie is not dead. He was not killed in, what is it, Dark Crisis? Dark Crisis on Dark Crisis Infinite, whatever it, it is. the Earth, Final Crisis, whatever, yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's actually trapped somewhere. We're not sure exactly where he is, but we do get some really interesting things going on here. Ollie does find somebody that we thought had disappeared for a long time. Very heartbreaking stuff, but it's not really a Green Arrow book per se. It's more like a Green Arrow family book as we've got Black Canary, Connor Hawk, as well as uh, Roy Harper all looking for Ollie and they kind of know where he is. I thought the art was really solid on this and I thought it was a nice heartwarming take on Green Arrow and it had a pretty decent amount of action as well. In theory, it works, but if you go in expecting a Green Arrow comic, you will be disappointed. Because Green Arrow, Oliver Queen, he's he shows up at the beginning. We get reintroduction to his origin. We see an island where he winds up on. It's kind of a callback to his origins of becoming Green Arrow. And then he shows up at the very end. He, so he, he bookends the comic. And for me, that was disappointing because I wanted a whole issue of Oliver Queen back as Green Arrow. It's been a long time since we've gotten like – because me personally, I am at a point where I'm borderline fed up with the superhero family books. We've got a Superman family, a Batman family. We've got a Wonder Woman Island family. We've got Flash families. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm tapped. I just want a single superhero comic. How about that? It's, a, it's an original crazy idea. But like I said, but like you said, it is a fun comic. If you go in wanting Roy Harper, uh, Black Canary, uh, you see the Cheshire Cat. It's fun stuff. It's a fun action book. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted Oliver Queen. Hopefully we get more of him in the issue too. But yeah, it, it is a good comic. But be be reader beware. If you go in expecting a lot of Oliver Queen, you you will be disappointed. So you think this should have been titled "The Search for Green Arrow Number One" rather than "Green Arrow Number One"? It's along those lines, yes, that would work. Or "Green Arrow and Friends," "Green Arrow and Corp," "Green Arrow Family," <laughs> the quiver. Maybe, yeah, "Search for Green Arrow" one shot to kind of get yeah. you to him bring back. I think maybe you're right or on the right track because at this point we've had a few debuts for Dawn of DC, and I still don't know what Dawn of DC is. It feels like, to me, for Joshua Williamson, Dawn of DC is getting back to more classic interpretations of the characters like a Superman or a Green Arrow. But if you read the rest of the DC comics with the Dawn of DC trade dress, I don't think that's what they're doing. No, it's not. And especially when you read about some of these these events that they're bringing forth from the Dawn of DC that have the banner on it. And like, this doesn't really feel like it. Like, uh, I will say the Flash advertisement with Cy Spurrier and Mike Diodato. That does not feel like a ton of the DCU book of what I want from the Flash at all whatsoever. And the Bat versus Cat story they got going on with Chip Zdarsky, that's not what I want from a ton of DCU. Uh, I'll say I'm pretty much you know, about 2070 pro to con right now with as much as I've liked the Dawn of the DCU. This has been not necessarily a wet fart so far, but it's been okay. <laughs> well, it's certainly all over the place, and I don't think they know what Dawn of DC is either. But I think if they did take the Joshua Williamson approach that he's gone with Superman and Green Arrow, and yes, there are way too many family books, and that's certainly yeah. playing a part in both of those series, where we're getting to really good classic interpretations of the characters, I think it would get people excited. But he's the only one doing it, and I think I do think that's a problem. Uh, a little uh, asterisk with that. I will say uh, Mark Wade and Dan Mora on uh, Shazam number one. I have already read that. It comes out next week. It will be a recommend for me. That is a prime example of what Donna DCU should be. Donna DC, what that should be, because it is a very fun read. I personally do recommend this. I thought it was really good. We got to go find Oliver Queen, put him back in the universe, and we'll see what happens. I hope it doesn't turn into a family book, but it kind of feels like they're headed that way. Now let's talk about our independent comic book recommendations. First up, you can't say enough about the Ambassadors number three from Image Comics. Mark Miller, Travis Chere on art here. I can tell basically the way that it's done and everything that happens here, Mark Miller realized he wasn't the main event for this comic book. Travis Chere was. And he gives them all the room in the world to just do this amazing display of Paris. 
And I think he intentionally went out of his way to get an artist that feels more like a, a European comic book style artist rather than an American comic book style artist for this specific book. For that reason, I want to talk about the story. We do get two more heroes. I think they're called Paris and France. It's a mother and like a son or something like that. And they're cool characters. And I do like the story, but I'm still just, I'm taken aback by the art itself. It was amazing. You're 100% correct. The, the art is, it's pretty much, I would say it's 60, 40 art to writer on this series right now, because the art is terrific and it's a very much an international story. So we're, we're seeing different heroes in different parts of the world as well. We're seeing artists from different parts of the world with their interpretations of the story. And Travis Charre, um, his art in this, I think it, from what I read, it took him three years at least to do this one issue. And you see why it took so long. Like you said, when we see those cityscapes of Paris, it is gorgeous. It is beautiful. Every page, every panel on this is beautiful. And I thoroughly enjoyed this issue. And yeah, we get um, a mother and son team up. It's this film, this issue is very much a nod and a throwback to like uh, superhero films. There's there's little nods and uh, nods and in jokes to certain movies and stuff all throughout this comic. And uh, there's a moment in this, which is a callback to Batman 66, when uh, there's a re wall reveal, you see the like, more or less the bat poles going down to the secret cave, and they got a Batmobile, more or less. It, it's a very fun, action-packed, fun comic. And, of course, you got Mark Miller, you're going to have the twists. And there's more or less a double twist at the end of this, which I really enjoyed. Uh, if you're not reading The Ambassadors, I, 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 and if you're waiting for the trade, do not wait for the trade. Please read this now. This is terrific and a prime example of what a comic book should be. This is absolutely a different kind of comic book reading experience, the way that he's changing artists to suit the stories themselves. And I do think Mark Miller is one of the few people that are like superstars in comic books that has enough confidence in himself to say, you know what? I'm not the main event this week. It's actually going to be the artist and he's going to blow this thing up and I need to take a step back. And I like the restraint that he had there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's restraint that you don't get a, a lot of times nowadays, like say from James Tynan, who has no restraint or Scott Snyder, who has no restraint. The, the, Mark Miller knows. He knows his place. He knows what he needs to do. He knows if he's going to show off the artist, he's going to keep the captions and the dialogue to a minimum and to what's just required. And he does that here. Our second Indie Cobble Book recommendation, The Scorch number 17 Image Comic, Sean Lewis writing, Steven Segovia on art here. I'm a huge Steven Segovia mark, and he fits right at home in the, in the Spawn universe. It just looks like a billion bucks. No topic following on writing, but that's not such a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's not. And if you read Guns, if you read Gunslinger last week, or uh, you really didn't need to read Gunslinger, all you got to do is look at that beautiful art that uh, from uh, Brett Booth and uh, also Corona. But this one, Steven Segovia, once again, his art is beautiful in this. And uh, so uh, in this issue, Earth has been marked through a very messed up way for these uh, Earth for these world eaters to come and devour the Earth, and it's not looking too good. Uh, meanwhile, another group uh, is spreading plagues and disease on Earth, which isn't helping either. Uh, but naturally, we got a big fight that uh, might be actually be a distraction for something larger that's coming to Earth. This was fun. This is just a straight up fun action horror comic book, and I love that. If you if you love Spawn, uh, this is one of the two titles you should be reading: Scorched and Gunslinger Spawn. Scorched number seventeen is a very very fun read. So those are our indie comic book recommendations this week. Let's get over to Marvel because we've already done the DC book we're going to do. We got four Marvel comic books to talk about. First one, Clobber in Time, number two, Steve Scrochy on art and writing on this one. I like the first issue more than I like this one, but the art is still top notch. It's a lot of fun here. If you like body horror, and that certainly fits in with the Ben Grimm type character, this is going to be right up your alley. This time he's teaming up with Wolverine, and I will say that I think Steve Scrochy has a better feel how to utilize Krakoa in the Krakoa setting than anyone currently writing X-Men comics. It all kind of sets up there. We've got this time-traveling villain that was introduced in the last issue that kind of pulls the thread through this one. I thought it looked like a million bucks. Not quite as good as issue number one, but I definitely still recommend it. Yeah, and his art style really reminds me of uh, Juan Jose Reap, uh, who's doing Wolverine right now. It's a really detailed, really fun, kinetic, uh, action-packed style i like that but uh this is more your recommend than mine i couldn't i me personally we, we talked about this i'll say there's a page in here early on i think it's page three page two there's a line of dialogue in here that it really for me it took me out of the comic book because when i read a comic like this clobbering time i expect fun escapism not been being lectured to 
And now, 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 James Croce, he may have been trying to be funny. Devil's advocate, he may have been trying to be funny by incorporating that in there. But me, I wasn't laughing. I, I think he was trying to like accentuate all the drama that's always around Ben Grimm. I think he was trying to play a joke off that. But I will agree with you, that doesn't play out that well. And it's the low point of the comic book. It, it really, and it's early on, too. It's very it's early on in the book. And it, for someone like me, who's who I, I really treasure my time and my patience when you got to read like 30 to 40 comics a week. And when that happens, I'm checked out. I, I don't care. It, it could have been the greatest comic afterwards. When you do, do that early on, I, I can't. But hey, if you can stomach through it, go right ahead. I, I, I will trust Wes on his recommend for this. It's not the greatest comic book after that, but it's pretty damn fun. But I'll give you that. The beginning of it is not great. But once you get out of that, it's a pretty good time. The other one, the, the bigger recommend, the biggest recommend from Marvel this week is Strange Academy Finals number six, as far as I'm concerned. Scotty Young, Umberto Ramos. I believe this is the end of the road of Strange Academy. This is probably the most satisfying conclusion I've read to a big, long story arc in, in a couple of years in comic books. Everything is paid off in here, and you can tell by the way that this was ended. They had planned this almost from the very beginning. They knew exactly where they were going to. They didn't waste a bunch of time doing a bunch of nonsense. They're all leading up to this moment, and you just get this amazing finale. It's not too short. It's the perfect link. And everything that needs to happen happens within this. You get the big Emily versus Doyle Dormammu confrontation. We've had the prophecy basically from the very beginning that was setting this up. And if you want to be a hero, even in the magical realm, sacrifice is a part of that. And they're learning that the hard way in this issue. Dynamite way to end, end Strange, Strange Academy, in my opinion. I'm trying to figure out what I can add to what you already said. <laughs> but uh, I will I, I will say, yeah, there is a body count in this. And I didn't see that coming. I did not see that happening. And it is great. And uh, we have a villain who really sticks to being a, a villain at this point. She does not change at by the end of this. She stays where she's at. But uh, it, it it shocked me. And the art by Humberto Ramos, my God. It, it, there's a one or two pages in here where he draws this tiger, and it looks like Ivan Reese drew it. And I would have thought Ivan did it. But it is so beautiful. And I... I Really, truly, Humberto put his heart into this series. And like you said, this is probably the, it, it might be the end of the road. I heard something that there's going to be another spinoff coming from this, but Scotty and Humberto won't be involved with it, which is a disappointment. That's but, me uh, checking out. That's what you yeah, just heard. Bullseye. Yeah, I am done because I'm I'm here for both these guys. They are the dream team. One of the dream teams is like Mark Wade and Dan Mora. These two are a dream team right now. And uh, this, like you said, it goes out with a bang. Please do check this out, guys. This was the best ongoing series from Marvel. Uh, consistently, consistently great every single issue. Please do check out Strange Academy Finals number six. You will not be disappointed, and that is a hell of a way to go out. Another big recommendation, Venom Lethal Protector 2, number two, David Michelini with Fareed Karami on this one. And this has one of the best old-school cool comic book covers I've seen in a long time. It felt like I was in the fucking 80s. It looks so good, and I don't know who Fareed Karami is, but my goodness, the interiors on this thing are absolutely badass. Absolutely. I had Because it really got to the point where I, I said, who the hell is this guy? I had to go look him up, and he did some Marvel Infinity comics. He did something on the Fantastic Four, it looks like, but that's it. It's all been Venom Lethal Protector and that stuff. And it, if Marvel is not paying attention to this guy's art, and he's not doing anything beyond this, I'm going to try to swoop this guy up, get him to work on something, because this guy is amazing. How he draws Silver Sable, oh, she is so thick. I love it. Venom, he kicks ass in this. Cardiac looks like a badass. Hell, Vulture looks like a badass in this. When you can make Vulture, an 80-year-old man, look like a badass, you, you're, you are talented here. And it is action-packed, it's kinetic. Uh, David Michelini, his writing, top-notch again. And we get old-school Nick Fury. The only thing he was missing was a stogie. He looked amazing. Uh, I, if you want traditional old-school Marvel comics written the best way possible with the best art, this is it. Venom Lethal Protector, number two. Uh, Farad Karimi, pay attention to this guy. Keep this guy uh, in your in your uh, sights. He will be doing bigger things, I guarantee it. I was, I was shocked by the art. I was like, wow, this looks like a really great 90s Marvel comic book. Just well done, sir. You got my attention. Now, can you keep it? That's the big question. The final recommendation, this is from you. This isn't new material, but if you're a fan of old school comic books, we've got Miracle Man, Marvel Tales, number one. If you don't know what Marvel Tales are, basically they'll go through and grab some of the classic books 
from a character's history and put them into this. They're normally like 10 bucks, 80 pages or whatnot. But if you like Miracle Man, or maybe you just discovered the character, but you haven't read any of the old stuff, this is a collection of the best Miracle Man comic books that you can find. Absolutely, yeah. And so this is the Alan Moore run on Miracle Man that he did back in uh, Warrior Monthly, Warrior Magazine. And this is effectively book one, A Dream of Flying. You have the whole book, A Dream of Flying, the original trade, in a $10 floppy format. I, you can't beat that. You really cannot. And it has a bunch of extra stuff in the back, sketches and everything. And it has uh, some original stories from Warrior Monthly, Warrior Magazine in the back as well with the warp smiths and the different aliens. If, if you really want to see where deconstructing a superhero and bringing re and restructuring that superhero afterwards, see where it was done first and correctly. This is where it was at miracle man by out via Alan Moore. It is the best. It is textbook. This is how you do it. Very nice. Those are our comic book recommendations for this week. I do want to say thank you very much to drew from comics elite. You got any final words? Uh, read some good comics guys. Go find them. We are at the end of the road, but we do not have to be done here. In fact, I've made a couple thousand videos, and if you don't know what to watch next, YouTube has looked at what you like to view and I like to create and said, this is the best video I ever created in the history of my channel directly for you. If you want some more Thinking Critical, definitely view it right now.